Huh? Huh? This isn't the woods. Where are all the animals? So much concrete. How did I get here? It's so lit up. This isn't natural. Just see the huge harvestman or daddy long legs. Ah. Uh, huh? I'm a little bit huh? about walking around this backpack full of moccasins. Beautiful a cotton mouth. Fruit and pears. It's amazing. Grasps the female. Big ones. I stepped on one. And cracks below the base. What is it? I need a milk. Sometimes, nature comes to you, and tonight, we're out here looking for an example of just that. We're out here looking for a creature who has made urban environments its home, that rather than being adversely affected and chased out by human habitation, instead their numbers have grown exponentially because of it. We're out here looking for the Mediterranean house gecko. The hint's right there in its name. They've taken amazing, exquisite advantage of humans and the way we build our structures. They specifically love brick houses and the cracks between it that they can get into and hide and live. And they come out at night and feed on insects, which are incredibly plentiful because of all the lights we leave around. So, it should be all around here. It's a perfect location. Out here at Old College, lights on year round. There's just enough natural areas and trees and things, but then tons of man made structures they're going to love to hide in. So, let's get to it and I'll show you something. When you're always spending your time running about out in the woods, it's kind of interesting to be in an urban setting. Walking around at night through all the places normally full of hustle and bustle. Seeing them very much devoid of people, but not devoid of life. Okay, so we found ourselves a little beauty right here, and I believe she's pregnant. We should come back down so we can get a look at her, though. Come on, girl. Come here. I got her. So as you can see here, we got lucky enough to find two of these guys. I'm looking at him just scurrying away. Now back over to her. It gets in focus. You can see her just sitting here. She's got those big eyes for seeing it at night. That characteristic uh, gecko coloration. Along with the partially translucent skin. Due to not needing to have a lot of pigment from not living or being active during the day. And you can see those fairly large toe pads she has there for climbing up surfaces as well. They're good little climbers and it's fun just to have them kind of scurrying around across your hand. You can see how she makes good, place, good use of foot placement for grip and stability. Now that she's back on the wall here, you can see how she's a little bit wider, going back to the fact that she's pregnant, like I was saying earlier. And you can kind of see uh, the translucent skin and where her eyes are. See those big eyes under her head. Got her. Now we can take a look under on her belly, and through that translucent skin I was talking about, you can see some of her internal organs as well as an egg developing. And you can see her tail twitching there. It's a defensive mechanism for predators. And this guy is giving us a great demonstration of how they use our human structures for, safe, for safety. He's in that crack 
and oftentimes they'll find cracks that go in even deeper and that's where they'll make their homes so they can run out right in there at short notice to stay safe from predators and sleep during the day as their name suggests mediterranean house geckos aren't actually native around here here being north texas or the americas in general they're actually native to well the mediterranean you know, being the Mediterranean house gecko and all. They've been fairly successful here, though. And all the other places they've been unwittingly introduced by humans. And seeing as they use a nighttime hunting strategy and picking up insects around lights, they fill an ecological niche that not much else does and don't really have many local predators. The only thing that would really compete for the same spot in the environment as them is maybe tree frogs but they haven't taken to living around humans near as well probably largely due to the fact that they're so reliant on water and moisture it's cool to see the way they run the way they kind of rock their body side to side thrusting off each one of their limbs it seems crude but it's remarkably effective they can definitely get around very quickly when they want to a similar mode of locomotion to many other lizards. In this scene, I was attempting to get him to show off his uh, vertical climbing ability on this glass, and I totally did not notice that guy walking inside there until I heard a noise. Jumped on my shorts. At which point, I promptly got the hell out of Dodge. I didn't want to be investigated for why the hell I was out here at such ungodly hours of the morning. Tell them I'm looking for lizards. That'll fly. Aww, I seem to have hurt his tail. I feel bad for that. But it does afford me a good opportunity to show you one of their best defensive mechanisms for predators. They have the ability to drop the tail as a distraction to a predator that may be trying to eat them. And you can see those muscle fibers in there on the tail, and those will allow the tail to start twitching and spazzing all over the place very violently as soon as it's actually detached from the animal itself, giving the predator something much more intriguing to focus its attention on and giving the lizard some much needed moments to get you know, way out of dodge. In one day, he'll grow his tail back. It'll look much like this one over here. A little bulbous and misshapen, and lacking the beautiful striated colorations of the original. But a tail nonetheless, providing him again the opportunity to remain safe from predators. Panning across his body here, you can really see those beautiful colors and patterns and bumps that give these lizards their characteristic look. And now you got that drop-dead gorgeous golden eye coming right into focus. Such a prominent part of the visual that makes them what they are. And they got that big eye to allow them to see well at night to hunt prey and capture as much light as possible. Or rather, that's the benefit it used to have for them. Now that they spend all their time hanging around artificial lights made by humans, it's probably not doing them much good. But, you know, in a past life, when they used to live in trees. I'm sure it was super useful. Another interesting little factoid about their eyes is that they don't actually have the ability to blink. They have to lick their eyes to clean it. One of the sacrifices they've made when developing those large eyes. Focused in on his feet here, you can clearly see those little ridges underneath his feet with the white tips. Those are his lamellae. They're used for clinging to different surfaces to climb. And they're interesting, because up close, it's like a ton of little valleys all stitched together with smaller valleys in them, and like tons of tiny little trees growing up through that. And it forms an area of low pressure that uses the barometric pressure of the air around them to hold them to all the surfaces they're climbing on. It's like a way of having mechanical adhesion. Super neat. And they also have claws 
on front as well. Not something you typically think of very often with geckos, but something they possess as well to aid them in climbing on surfaces that have more texture and bite. And that hole right there is his ear, like lizards have. It's just a direct opening into their head. All in all, I suppose these guys may be an invasive species, and for that, we should probably dislike them and want to preserve things as they were. But I can't say that I have any malice or feelings against them. In fact, quite to the contrary. I think they make the place better. It makes me happy to walk out at night and get to see these little guys running around and feeding on insects. And who can really say that they don't like their porch with a few less insects on it? And something nice to watch. I'm sure there's plenty more that I'll wish I've said. But... I think we'll call this a night for now, and I just really hope that you enjoyed have, taking this tour with me into the life of these cute little critters. Well, bye for now, and as always, thanks for watching.